Hello everyone, this is David Godibadze from Mighty Solutions Network and in this video I'm going to show you how to configure the WireGuard VPN on the Unify device. Now here as you can see I have a Unify device and I have public IP address on it. We go into settings, then VPN and then VPN server. And here by default we have WireGuard server 1, you can name it wherever you want. I'm going to name it remote users, remote developers, for example. And then I'm going to click add client. And that would be developer one. Then I'm going to click the download link here right now. And it is downloaded. Now I'm going to click add after I downloaded the file. And I'm going to click add again. This is it. WireGuard VPN is configured. Now let's go and open that file into WireGuard application. Here's the WireGuard client. I'm gonna click Add Tunnel and I'm gonna open the remote developers file I just downloaded. Now let's go and grab the IP address of the LAN IP. Here I have several hosts. This one is the Raspberry Pi. I can copy this IP and try to open this IP and of course it doesn't work. But if I activate this VPN, it works. Now I can log into this LAN IP address of this same subnet that the Unify Ultra has on one of the IP address. And you see how my IP address is 2.2? .2? This is because in the VPN, server here when we configure the client this was the ip we were given you can of course change this ip if you want but never change the ip from the client side because if you do that you will still connect well at least wireguard will show it's connected but it won't work so you don't want to do that now what if we want to do split tunneling and what does it mean the split tunnel means that uh, you want to split the traffic that goes to the internet and goes to the VPN. Right now, my public IP address is this guy. This is my public IP address of the remote user. Now, if I activate the VPN, my IP address will become this guy because all the traffic will go through the WireGuard VPN. And the reason for that is I'm getting the default route. So if I activate this, and I'll refresh this website. My IP address here will change to that too, because that's the IP address of the Unify router. Now let's do the split tunneling, because I want to access this Raspberry Pi IP address, and I want to go to the internet with my real IP and not Unify IP address. Let's deactivate this. We're going to edit, and here you're gonna change it the routes you want to choose to go to the vpn and the route you want to choose to go to the internet now this means default internet i'm going to change it and i'm going to make it 192.168.1.0/24 and that's it now if i click save here that means if i go to this subnet the this subnet the traffic will go through the vpn anything else will go directly to the internet Let's try and test this. Activate. Now, remember, this is the IP address of the Unify router. If you go in, into internet, this is the IP address, right? I'm going to refresh this and this IP changes to 17 because that's the IP address of, my, of this remote user computer, and the public IP address. And I can still access the Raspberry Pi on the VPN server side with my VPN, uh, VPN IP address. And if you want to restrict the access to the LAN network for WireGuard VPNs, you're going to security, you're going to traffic and firewalls, and you're gonna do access list here in the LAN out, because the only way to restrict the traffic coming from WireGuard is to block it when the traffic leaves the router and goes to the host on the lab. So for example here, I'm going to do 
let's do LAN out and I'm going to block the ICMP towards this IP, but I'm going to leave the web access as it is. So first of all, let me show you that the ICMP works. It's pingable. And now let's block ping, right? Let's block ICMP. That would be ICMP here as well. And then I want to block any kind of ICMP. And the source, I want to make it IP address 192.168.2.2 because that's the IP address I'm getting on the VPN when I'm connected to the VPN server. And the destination IP address would be 192.168.1.134 and add rule. Now, this rule is going to be placed here and you'll notice these different kind of icons on it, which means this is the custom rule. Now, if I go and refresh this, I can still open this website, right? I can still see what's my source IP address is, but if I try to ping it, I should not be able to ping it anymore. That's interesting. I'm still able to ping the IP. Let's see if the changes has been implemented. Okay, there is no pending. Let's confirm the rule we implemented is correct. Let's go into LAN out source IP 2.2192 and ICMP. Mm, accept. Okay, it's not going to block if we do accept here. So let's choose drop or reject. Drop is good for now. Let's try to ping it. And of course, I'm not able to ping it because now the security rule set is correctly implemented. I can still open this page though. By new open, new tab, I can still access it. And this is how you control the access for the remote VPN users. This is all for now. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. See you in the next time.